Reports have emerged that WWE superstar MVP allegedly knocked out Chris Jericho during an altercation on the Jericho cruise back in 2020. Plenty of details in that plus. Speaking of Chris Jericho, his music repeatedly played last night on AEW Dynamite. Some are suggesting this was to drown out a negative reaction inside Daly's place in Jacksonville, Florida. A first-hand account of the backstage altercation involving CM Punk at AEW All In last year has been revealed and it comes from an interesting source. The Young Bucks make their return last night on the homecoming edition of AEW Dynamite from Jacksonville, Florida. The next challengers for Samoa Joe's AEW World Championship has been revealed. The next challenger for the TBS Championship has also been revealed on Dynamite last night. Deanna Perazzo will be making her AEW in-ring return this weekend on AEW Collision. Ray Phoenix opens up on his current injury issues and CJ Perry is back in hospital and may have to undergo another surgery. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about this interesting report when it comes to Chris Jericho and his now infamous issues with WWE superstar MVP. Now, of course, Chris Jericho is back in the headlines, this time for an incident that allegedly happened close to four years ago on the Jericho cruise back in 2020. According to a new report from Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net, Jericho was involved in an altercation with former United States champion and current WWE superstar MVP during the Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea Part 2 second wave event. According to Haynes, MVP and Jericho exchanged heated words, after which MVP, quote, knocked out Jericho. Now, Haynes' inquiries began after Brian Last vaguely alluded to the incident on a recent episode of the Cornette's drive Through podcast. The report was also somewhat corroborated by Sean Ross Sapper Fightful, who said he heard the story while reporting on other issues between Jericho and MVP when they were reported. The two men previously had a heated exchange on Twitter back in 2020 following the results of the United States presidential election. The pair then had a run-in in a Texas hotel in May of 2022. The situation reportedly did not escalate into violence but was described as quote very tense. Chris Jericho, of course, recently has been the subject of sexual misconduct rumours after a clip of House of Wrestling's Nick Houseman went viral. Houseman suggested Jericho had skeletons in his closet, going so far as to bring up Harvey Weinstein during the conversation for comparison. AEW President Tony Khan addressed the allegations in a press conference after the World's End pay-per-view, but said he wasn't going to rush to conclusions or speak on the matter. As of this recording, Jericho has yet to respond to the rumours in any way. He's set to be in action alongside Sammy Guevara at AEW's Battle of the Bout special this weekend, taking on the AEW World Tag Team Champions Ricky Starks and Big Bill in a street fight. Speaking of Jericho, he was on AEW Dynamite last night. It was the homecoming edition of AEW Dynamite on TBS from Jacksonville, Florida, inside Daly's place. And certainly a production element of it has got a lot of people talking as to how maybe AEW are going to address some of the rumors surrounding its former world champion. As Big Bill put a beating to Sammy Guevara following the latter's victory over Ricky Starks on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite, Chris Jericho hit the ring to even the sides. That's par for the course on a wrestling show, of course, but it was impossible not to notice that Jericho's theme played throughout the entire segment, drowning out any noise from the crowd, including their customary singing of Judas, little of which possibly seemed to be happening. The extended playing of Jericho's music did not appear to be a production mistake and may have been put in place to mask an anticipated negative reaction from the Jacksonville crowd. Of course, the episode marked Jericho's first live appearance on AEW Dynamite since he was compared to Harvey Weinstein in a Skeletons in the Closet reference by House of Wrestling's Nick Houseman. Of course, it's the first time he's appeared in person on any AEW programming since the World's End pay-per-view, so possibly this was a situation whereby AEW thought that Jericho would continue to get this negative reaction, so they wanted to drown that out. What are your thoughts on the reports of Jericho being knocked out by MVP in 20? 2020? Is it just being brought up because Jericho's in the headlines right now? What did you think of AEW continuously playing Jericho's theme song last night? Did it work or is this an issue that AEW is going to have to address in the future? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Now, this is quite interesting because it's an event that seemingly just won't go away. And that's the backstage altercation at AW All In last year at Wembley Stadium. Now, a first-hand account of the melee backstage during AW All In that led to the eventual firing of CM Punk from All Elite Wrestling has now been shared. 
and it actually isn't a wrestler or anyone from AEW that's doing the sharing. Instead, it was DJ Who Kid sharing the experience of what he witnessed on a recent appearance on Jim Norton and Sam Roberts' show. Explaining what he observed during the infamous backstage altercation at Wembley Stadium, DJ Who Kid said, quote, You already know what happened in the back. It was straight Brawl City. I'm not going to talk about that. Blood and killing and death. You might as well say it. I was right there. We were next. They put us to be ready to go. It was crazy. It's ongoing, they told me. This has been ongoing. That was the last straw. It was the biggest moment for AEW, and I guess he was trying to sabotage that moment. He wasn't trying to go out there. I'm in the middle. I'm a fly on the wall. It was very intense. I always thought it was fake and all this shit. It's more real. It's wrestling. It was wrestling back there, a DDT and everything. I'm exaggerating. There was a yelling moment where he was like, F this shit. This is our moment. Everybody get the F out there and do your shit. I was like, I don't wrestle, but I was about to go out there. It was very intense. I will always respect wrestling after I saw that. When asked who was doing the yelling, the rapper wasn't sure, but gave an intriguing description saying, quote, the big guy, the Hawaiian looking dude, it was the guy going ham. And I was like, oh shit, then blood was everywhere from the fight before that. They came in and they were bleeding. I was like, what is going on around here? This is intense. Now, after the backstage incident, CM Punk was fired after the situation led the AEW president, Tony Khan, to describe the experience as leading him to fear for his life and feel that his life was in danger. What are your thoughts on that account? Does that give you any kind of insight or is it still just as mysterious as it was previously? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Now, the Young Bucks, they are back on AEW programming after a couple of months' absence. The Young Bucks returned to AEW television on Wednesday during Dynamite Homecoming from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. And while nothing has been officially confirmed, they seem to have been positioned as the opponents of Darby Allin and Sting in the latter's final match at AEW Revolution. Matt and Nick Jackson's music hit on Dynamite following Darby and Sting's Tornado Tag victory against Powerhouse Hobbs and Konosuke Takeshita, where the babyface team, as I mentioned, got the win. Sting and Darby Allen, alongside Ric Flair, were in the ring with Tony Schiavone, who asked Sting who his opponent would be for his last match on the March 3rd pay-per-view. That was when the Young Bucks appeared, acting very serious, sporting new mustaches and wearing black and white trench coats. They stared down Sting and Darby from the stage before making their way to the back as the show went off the air, suggesting fisticuffs in the near future. Of course, the Bucks have been off television since losing a future shot at the AW World Tag Team Championships at Full Gear in November. Following the match, Matt Jackson lost his call at ringside, smashing up the area. At the time, it was reported that the Bucks would be turning heel and forming a stable involving Brandon Cutler and possibly Colt Cabana. Sting, for his part, has wrestled exclusively in tag team or multi-man matches since his debut for AW, where he holds a record of 26-0 as of this recording. So what are your thoughts on the Young Bucks' return? And what are your thoughts on the Bucks being the final opponent for Sting as he could team with Darby Allen at AW Revolution. Does that live up to expectations or were you expecting something different? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Samoa Joe made his first appearance on AW Dynamite as the AW World Champion. And Joe's been a champion for barely two weeks, and he's already in the sights of many of AEW's top stars. On Wednesday's AEW Dynamite, Joe came out to the ring with his world title to address the crowd and was soon interrupted by Swerve Strickland. He was quick to make it clear he feels he deserves a shot at the world champion. Before Swerve could make his case in total, Swerve's bitter rival Hangman Page stormed the ring to steal the mic and tell Joe he too had eyes for Joe's championship bout, which Page once held. Joe began to address his pair of prospective challengers when Joe's next challenger, FTW champion Hook, came down to the ring to stare down Samoa Joe before their big world title match next week on Dynamite. The AEW world champion, much like MJF before him, seemingly has a bevy of challenges to deal with on the road to AEW Revolution in March. Joe has been champion since AEW World's End on December 30, where he defeated MJF to win the title for the first time. Swerve and Page are coming off a bitter personal rivalry, which saw Swerve invade Hangman's home and also choke out Hangman with a chain at AEW Full Gear. If the two men are both eyeing Joe's world title, it is more than likely that their bloody feud is not over just yet. So Hook's going to challenge for the title next week, but who do you think should challenge for the AEW World Championship at Revolution in March? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Speaking of challenges for titles, we 
may know who is the next challenger for the AEW TBS Championship. In a massive eight-woman match on AEW Dynamite that saw Brody Lee's hand-picked protege Anna Jay teaming up with Thunder Rosa, Chris Statlander, and Willow Nightingale taking on the team of Julia Hart, Sky Blue, Soraya, and Ruby Soho. While it was Anna Jay that ended up picking the pinfall victory, as had Brody Lee's other handpicked protege in an earlier match in the evening, Preston Vance, for her team. However, during the match and after, there was clearly bad blood between Julia Hart and Anna Jay. Anna Jay has been making moves in the singles division as of late, picking up four wins out of her last six matches. Later on Twitter, it was confirmed that Anna Jay would be challenging Julia Hart for the TBS Championship on this week's AEW special Battle of the Bouts, airing after AW Collision on Saturday, January 13. So we're going to be getting that big title match this coming weekend. Deanna Perrazzo, we know when she's going to be making her AW in ring return, and it's going to be sooner rather than later. On this week's episode of AW Collision, new AW signing Deanna Perrazzo will be making her collision debut and taking on an AW original. This Saturday, January 13, Deanna Perrazzo is set to make her AW in ring return after being signed by the company. In a backstage interview on last night's AW Dynamite, Deanna Perrazzo was speaking to Renee Paquette regarding her debut last week or return on AW Dynamite. Dynamite. While earlier in the show, Tony Storm denied knowing who Perazzo was, Diana Perazzo promised to have her people call Storm's people to send her a screener. She remains steadfast in her pursuit of the AEW Women's World Championship, regardless if it means she has to go through timeless Tony Storm to get it. Perazzo revealed that her first in-ring appearance since signing with the company would occur this Saturday, soon as a challenger appeared. Red Velvet popped into the frame, and the pair will have a match this weekend on AEW Collision. So that match is set for Saturday as well. Now, a bit of an injury update on Ray Phoenix after he's been out of action with injury as his brother Penta Alzera Miedo has continued on in AW alongside fellow luchadors El Hio Del Vikingo and Commander. Ray Phoenix has been forced to sit at home recovering from several injuries. But fortunately, the former AW World Tag Team Champion and International Champion may be coming back sooner before anyone knows it. In an interview with Denise Salcedo, Phoenix was asked about his recovery and indicated everything was going as scheduled, though he also admitted this injury was far more severe than any he had previously suffered. Quote, we are working on the recovery, Phoenix said. It's one of my, I think it's the worst injury I've ever had, but I'm taking my time. I'm doing a good job on my recovery. I've put everything with the doctors. I'm following the doctor's line. I'm doing my best. I can talk about so much about that soon. Soon I'll be in the ring doing Lucha Libre, the thing that makes me so happy. Now, the injury came at the worst possible time for Phoenix, who has said he re-aggravated an old wound during the match. He won the AEW International Championship from John Moxley, who himself suffered a concussion during the match. Despite the injury, Phoenix pressed on for a few weeks, resting at AEW Wrestle Dream and defending the international title against Jeff Jarrett and Nick Jackson before dropping the title to Orange Cassidy on October 10, Phoenix's last appearance in AEW to date. Phoenix isn't the only member of his Death Triangle trio to miss time recently, as fellow member Pac has been sidelined to since the summer when he suffered an injury resting Claudio Castagnoli on the Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view. According to Penta, Pac is said to be doing well in recovery and like Phoenix, should be returning soon. In fact, there were reports he may have even been backstage last night during AEW Dynamite in Jacksonville at Daly's Place. Finally, an update on CJ Perry, and it's not good news regarding her finger issues which she's been dealing with recently. Things haven't come easy for CJ Perry over the past month. The AW star missed a good chunk of December after she was hospitalized with an infection in her finger that could have proven serious. And despite what appeared to be successful surgery to remove the infection, Perry may not be just quite out of the woods just yet taken to Instagram on Wednesday morning, Perry revealed that she was on her way back to the hospital due to what she described as complications. Perry also admitted that the complications could involve the infection coming back, which would then require her to have a second surgery. As such, Perry could wind up missing more time from AEW, including this week's episodes of Dynamite, Rampage and Collision. Perry joined AEW back in September, where she made an appearance at AEW All Out, saving her husband Miro from a post-match attack from Powerhouse Hobbs. Despite this, Miro rejected Perry, prompting the former WWE star to seek out other clients. Perry would represent Action Andretti and most notably Andrade Al Idlo, who she managed during his run in the AEW Continental Classic Tournament until she was forced out due to her surgery. Perry's association with Andrade drew the ire of Miro, leading to the two facing off at AEW World's End, with a returning Perry all 
ultimately turning against Andrade to help Miro win, though Miro still appeared to be weary of Perry afterwards. The match proved to be Andrade's swan song in AEW as he announced as it was announced that he had just left the promotion just a few days later, with a report suggesting he is going to return to WWE, could be soon in his future. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.